What's up guys? We're back, Hustler Casino Live. On the live stream on another Friday night stream, we're playing 100, 200, and it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. I've been having some fun playing some tournaments, but nothing like playing some cash games here on stream that uh, really makes my blood pumping when we play a really big like two hundred thousand dollar pot. So I'm looking forward to it. I just landed in LA for a little bit. I'm going back to Vegas for you know, WCP is going on. So quick little break from tournaments is always nice. Let's hope to run good because damn, I could use some money to uh, fire some more, into more tournaments. They get kind of costly. So I uh, hope to run good. Glad I'm back here in LA. Shout out to everyone that's working on the stream and let's get it started. Let's hop into the action here. Another Friday night at Hustler playing 100, 200 and given the lineup, we can certainly expect the game to get bigger. So we start off this session with Nick putting on the $2,000 straddle. This is not the typical Friday stream. And I looked down at the good old jack six of diamonds and the hijack. I decided to raise this up to 7,000. You don't come here to fold, especially when Nick's putting out free money in the middle and Nick defends the straddle. Going to a flop of jack seven three with already over 14,000 in the middle. Uh, I decided to check with my top pair, bad kicker, and Nick is obliged to bet out 5,000. Definitely not going to uh, go anywhere here. Of course, I'm going to just make the call here and see a turn, which is a magical six of hearts. It's a little scary. Obviously, flush draw gets there, but I check it over to Nick once again, and he fires out 10,000. Never folding the spot with two pair. I don't think I want to raise as I don't really want his bluffs to fold. So I make the call, and we're going to river, which is another six boating up. Like I said, the premium jack six of diamonds. Unfortunately, action just goes check, check. No more money to be made off of Nick. I couldn't milk him for any more money. And I scoop up plus $22,000 with a full house, the gold jack six. And that's going to lead up to this next hand. Two minutes later, Nick puts on the $800 straddle because the game is too small for him. And I peel aces in the big blind. Amazing to see a premium here, especially with the straddle. I raise it up to 3,000 here. Nick is uh, Nick is just in a different kind of mood. Here to gamble, and he three bets to 7,000. Of course, sitting with the best hand in poker, $7,000 is not going to work. I decide to four bet to 18,000 putting in more money into the middle, trying to commit my entire stack in here and get more money. He makes the call. He's not going to be folding. Going to a flop of King 5-4 Rainbow. Very innocent looking, all things considered. It's a pretty good flop for aces. Got to expect to have the best hand. I throw 10,000 into the middle, just trying to milk him in here, like I said. This is all about milking Nick for some good old value, and he snap calls this bet. Turn brings another 5 not the best card to see, but overall, I can't expect my opponent to have many fives. Brings in a backdoor flush draw. Maybe he has a flush draw. Maybe he has a king. And I'm going to throw $27,000 into the middle, sizing up for an all-in on the river. And Nick decides to go all-in himself. He goes all-in for $90,000 effective as he covers me. I snap call. What am I supposed to do, man? I've got aces. It's probably the best hand a lot of the time. And I show it immediately. Nick doesn't show. He actually... <laughs> He actually asked if I want to, want to run it once or twice. Typically, that's something that the winner of the hand asks the other opponent. Um, so who knows what's going on? We decide on one time. River comes a jack, and to my surprise, Nick shows the jack five. Cool. You have a boat. Slow rolled me with a full house. He is he is just ecstatic, celebrating. And uh, I'm starting the session right off the bat down $100,000. I get a full house with the Jack-6. Nick gets me back for a much bigger pot with the Jack-5. Uh, full house on full house crime. And yeah, that's not a good start to the session. Moving right along from one premium to another 5-3 offsuit in the small blind. That's right. I limp in for $200 against Charles' big blind. He checks his option, and we're going to a flop of ace-queen-deuce two clubs. Here, action's going to go check, check, and we see the bink turn four of hearts. Amazing news here, of course. I am going to uh, be putting money into the middle, of course. With the wheel with the straight, I bet 500, and to my surprise, Charles raises to 1,200. Gotta love that. Gotta love getting raised when you have the nuts right now. So, uh, of course, I'm inclined to put more money into the middle. Maybe Charles likes his hand enough for $4,000, hopefully. And for 4 k he does make the call. So, um, loving this situation. We're going to a 
river, hoping to see a clean one. It is another four. All right, dealer. I asked for one four. I don't want two of them. Now I don't have the nuts. It's a little bit scary because I did raise again on the turn. So you could have some two pairs that turn into a full house now, but can't be afraid. Still need a bet. And I throw $7,000 in the middle. And when Charles just makes the call, we know we have the best hand as most full houses are going to be raising. And I scoop in $11,000, slowly trying to rebound from that awful aces hand earlier. Moving right along, we actually pick up a premium now. Queens in the hijack. JR under the gun raises to $600 with no straddle on. I three bet to 2,000 here. And now Henry on the button, four bets to 5,500. There's a raise, a rather raise, a re-re-raise, and now Nick, next to act in the small blind, re-re-re-raises. So much raising going on in this pot. He five bets to 21,000. What the hell is happening here, guys? JR gets out of the way wisely, and now sitting with a premium pocket queens, it's most likely the best hand, but it is a little bit scary. So I'm not going to put any more additional raises into this pot right now. I'm, I'm happy to see a flop and kind of relax, guys. So I make the call. You know, obviously, queens is a good hand, but given how the hand's played out, it's very likely someone can have aces and kings. Anyways, when Henry tanks for a long time, it doesn't seem like he has... Uh, a premium given how long it takes him to call. So he's in here as well. So three ways in a five bet pot over $60,000 into the middle. I don't know what I'm looking for, but a queen high flop would be pretty good for me. Flop is Jack six, four rainbow. It's not queen high, but it is an over pair nonetheless. And when Nick actually starts off with a check out of position, it makes me feel a little bit better about my hand. I think Nick's the type of player that's going to be betting a lot of the time with his best holdings, whether it be aces, kings, or even jacks in the situation. So when Nick checks it over to me, I feel a bit more comfortable. But we do have another opponent at play, which is Henry on the button. He can very likely have all the premiums as well. So trying to be on the cautious side, I decided to throw out a very small bet of 14000 here. Henry takes his time, and ultimately, he's the person that I'm most afraid of, as he can have some sets, jacks, kings, aces, all of the good stuff, and he actually ends up making the call. And Nick gets out of the way wisely, and this is uh, not a spot that I love anymore. At this point, I really don't want to put any more money in the middle, really afraid of what Henry's got, because it seems really strong of what he can be holding. We're going to a turn, which is a 9 it's not a queen, and that's the only card I really want to see. So I'm going to slow down and start off with a check as I'm out of position to the button player. And Henry checks this one back, which is actually something I didn't expect to see. But off to a river, which is the three of clubs. Backdoor flush gets there. Once again, I check. Like I said, I'm not really loving this situation, even though I do have an over pair. And Henry, Henry decides to put the hammer down and goes all in. I never asked for a count, but I immediately just want to snap fold this hand. Like right off the bat, I want to fold, but I want to take my time. It is a very big spot. I don't want to like arrive at the wrong conclusion, but at the end of the day, uh, I don't love Queens. I don't have a club. I, I think I literally have one of the worst hands here, like not having a set in this spot. So, uh, I just end up folding. Uh, and, and to my surprise, I thought Henry had jacks or even like ace king of clubs, but he actually has fours, four bets with the fours. He gets in here with the five bet pot with bottom set and uh, finds a way to basically have the nuts. I lose about $50,000 this hand, not really loving it. So a little steamed up, riled up. We're arriving here with four three of hearts on the straddle. Mike opens up the button to $1,000 and I defend. Going to a flop of seven, four, three rainbow bottom two pair. It's my time to make some money back. I check it over to Mike who bets $1,000 and well, the 1,000 is not big enough here. Definitely going to put in a raise and I check raise a little bit on the larger side to 4,000. I want to put as much money in the middle as possible. And for 4,000, my opponent makes the call. Going to a turn which comes a king now. It's essentially a complete brick unless somehow my opponent actually has kings or king seven. Anyways, I'm going to fire out another bet and it's going to be a big one at that because this card really is disconnected from the board. I fire out $15,000. I want to get it in with all of my best hands and 4-3 kind of qualifies for that. For 15000 my opponent calls one more time and now we're going to a river which comes a six. Ah... That, that one hurts. There's a four-liner out there. 
I don't know if my hand's even good or not at this point. Like, I beat random sevens, I beat like jacks, I beat tens, you know, all of those hands that I still could be ahead of with two pair. So I'm kind of on the fence whether I want to bet or check. And, you know, I'm stuck a pile. I'm trying to be ambitious. I throw $25,000 in there for value. My opponent snap calls, which is never really the best sign. And of course, I lose to five, seven. That's Flop top pair with a gutter, gets there with a gutter. I lose $45,000 this hand, and back to back hands, you see, I'm showcasing losing more money. Moving right along, trying to make some money back because I'm down piles at this point. I pick up ace nine offsuit in the button and raise it up to $1,000. We get Charles in the small blind to call, Henry in the big blind to call, Nick in the straddle to call. Seems like everyone wants to play pots with me. I wonder why. Going to a flop four ways, and it comes six, seven, eight rainbow. Action checks to me. I have a nine in my hand. I that that means I have a straight draw, and a straight draw is at this point good enough to pile in a bunch of money. Because what else are you gonna do when you're stuck almost two hundred thousand dollars? I bet three thousand into the pot because maybe I can build this one. I get Charles and Henry to call, so multi-way still we go to a turn which comes a deuce of diamonds. Brings in a backdoor flush draw here, and action checks to me once again. Given the passive action, players only making the call on this flop, doesn't seem like anyone has a straight. And if no one has a straight, I have a nine, I can represent one, right? So I'm gonna blast and fire out $20,000 into the middle, a little bit of an overbet. What would I want to do if I had a straight in the best hand? It's to blast really big and I'm gonna pretend like I have a good hand. Charles ends up getting out of the way and folds, but Henry goes into the tank Thinks about it for a while and he doesn't look like he's folding. All I hope it for is that for my opponent to not go all in because that would really, really suck. But Henry decides on a call. So there's still a chance I can bluff him off of whatever he's holding here. We're going to a river, which is the Jack of Spades. I do not improve, totally brick out and Henry checks his option. Here, I'm just gonna stick to the plan. I don't think my opponent has that strong of a hand because a lot of them would have check raised at some frequency on the flop or turn. So I've got 60,000 in my stack and I'm putting it all into the middle. I go all in, which is somewhat nerve wracking at this point because if Henry ends up making the call correctly with any sort of pair, two pair, straight, whatever it could be, uh, I'm, I'm literally down infinite money. So uh, here, hoping that Henry ends up getting out of the way and fold and we can see Henry actually has a worse hand in mind with ace five of diamonds. He ends up tanking for a very long time. It would have been actually insane if Henry Hero called ace high and I win. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, Henry ends up getting out of the way and folds. I win about $29,000 in this pot. Thank goodness we're back on the winning track. After this hand, I add on a little bit more money, add on another $100,000. I'm in for about $350,000 for the session and I'm stuck about 140 k Got to rebuild. So two hours of poker goes by, nothing crazy happens. I'm three betting with king 10 off suit, ace nine off suit. There's a little bit of mix of tilts and widening up the hand that I'm playing here. And moving right along two hours later, picking up ace five off suit, we're on the straddle and Mike limps on the button for $800. Well, I see an ace and I'm going to go crazy because I raise it up to 3,400 here in this spot. I'm laughing while I'm doing this commentary. The tilt is insane. Charles makes the call, Mike makes the call. Why would anyone ever fold to me? Cause I'm spewing money left and right. Off to a flop we go of ace, jack, three, two clubs. Uh, with top pair, bad, bad kicker and out of position, I ended up checking in action, ended up checking around. Turn comes the king of hearts. And uh, at this point, I'm gonna start betting because if I'm gonna start bluffing with a bunch of nonsense, I better start betting my top pairs for value. So I throw $6,000 into the middle and we get Charles to make the call. River comes the eight of clubs. And once again, I think at this point I could probably give up and check with the flush getting there, but I'm greedy. I want some more money. I bet 17,000 Charles ends up folding and happily going to scoop in $13,000 here. So uh, at this point, Graphic shows I'm down about $93,000, slowly trying to claw back here, and there's no better way to do it than putting on the hood, shrinking the hood as close as possible to my face, getting the doom zoomed. It's not a good day for me right now. All right, nearing the end of the stream, pick up ace-king offsuit. 
it's a pretty good hand, I would say. So Will limps on the button for $400. I am going to have none of this limping nonsense. I raised up to 2000. Henry makes the call, Will makes the call. Common theme, if I'm raising, people are in here. Flop comes a six deuce rainbow. And here, once again, I'm out of position. I decide to check with a very strong hand and action checks around. Turn comes the seven of hearts, bringing in a backdoor flush draw. And at this point, definitely going to get some value. I throw $7,000 in there. And to my surprise, both Henry and Will make the call. So not really loving this spot, and I'm loving it a little bit less when the four of hearts gets there. So uh, backdoor flush draw completes, lots of two pairs get there, and I have just top pair. So I'm gonna check it over to Henry, and he throws out 9,000, which seems like a really small bet. And for 9,000, Will actually calls as well. You know what happens when you're stuck over $100,000 with top pair, top kicker facing a good price? Well, you're just going to make the call because 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 what 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 could go wrong? Either I lose another 9,000, which doesn't matter, or I could win a pile of money in the middle. And uh, there's no chance I'm winning this because Henry has a flush. Will has a straight. I'm the fish at the table and I'm losing another one. Moving on to the last hand of the session, we've got a ridiculous $1,600 straddle on. So variance is very high. And we're just gonna see what happens. Mike opens up the button to $5,000 because the straddle is on and things are out of hand. Will in the big blind three bets to 15,000. And oh my God, I pick up tens on one of the other straddles. <laughs> oh man, I don't love this spot at all. Will has not been playing many hands, hasn't really been three betting very much in this entire session at all. So sitting with tens actually makes me feel not very confident in the strength of my hand. Uh, there's lots of different things that I want to do. I want to call, I want to fold, and I want to three bet. All of these things are pulled in different directions of my soul and body. And you know, one of the options takes precedent over the other, mainly because I'm down so much money. Folding tens is uh, not going to be in play. And I decided to four bet to $40,000. And the moment I decide to do this, I know that I'm just gonna commit my stack because because that's what you have to do at this point. I chose the path of going very high variance and hopefully everything works out. Mike ends up folding wisely. Will's in the tank for a very long time with about $90,000 in his stack. And $90,000 at this point isn't a whole lot because the straddle's on. It's about 60 big blinds. And with tens and playing about 60 big blinds deep, you're just all in. So Will takes his time and ends up going all in himself. Um, at this point, I think he can have like a lot of ace king, ace queen, or jacks, basically, because any of the other better hands would not have tank jammed for that long. Anyways, uh, yeah, I snap call. He asks me if I have aces. That's the most tilting thing to, to ask someone when you know you don't have the best hand anymore. Uh, I ask if he has a pair. He says, yes, I know I'm dead. He turns a set. That's how I lose another $90,000. And uh, yeah, doom zoom on for sure because I couldn't be more tilted anymore. Uh, didn't have to lose an extra $90,000 to someone who really wasn't playing many hands the entire session. Pretty frustrated at myself and I have no one to blame but me for losing this pot. And that's it. That's, that's how I lost a lot of money today. Uh, I was trying to climb back. Things were going okay until, uh, well, the wheels started really, really running off there. So uh, that's, that's it. Going to the outro, lots of pain, lots of losing. By far the biggest loss of my life, unfortunate. All right, this is actually really bright. It's, uh, it's 10 p.m. We're done with the session. That was a fucking torching. Yeah. We are currently driving to Vegas right now for our private game on Sunday. So there's gonna be a video about that for sure. 2550. Will I make up everything that I lost in the private game? That seems pretty unlikely, but uh, I guess I'm gonna plug that because if you wanna hop in and play in the 2550, we're gonna try to host it every single Sunday in Vegas on the strip. Uh, DM one of us on Instagram. Happy to uh, invite you guys out because we're gonna have a couple tables going. Anyways, about this session, just got absolutely railed and every single big spot just ran into a cooler, just had to get it in. Uh, basically the two big spots where I lost two $200,000 pots. Uh, yeah, that happens, that kind of sucks. <laughs> like the stakes are 100, 200, but when the 800 or 1600 straddles on, then everything's different and it sucks to play big pots when that happens. So I was in the game for 350,000, out of the game for 157,400. 
you can do the math yourself as to how much I lost. Biggest loss of my life. Did I have 100% of myself? Yep. <laughs> Fuck my life. Uh, here's to winning a tournament this summer because that's the only way to crawl out of this hole. But thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Always appreciate pity likes. And I'll see you in the next one.